remove the head, the actual fan cover and shroud, you need two screws on one side, one screw on the other side, you remove those, and that will expose your head. Here is the hot end currently for the Ender 3 V3 SE. We're going to go ahead and change this over to the ceramic hot end that works on the K1. Since we already took this off earlier, we're going to go ahead and just backtrack a little bit. Remember, you take those four screws off of the side to pull off the actual motor. You do want to uh, disassemble your BLCR touch, whatever it is, and unscrew from here and leave this loose. You're going to change out the hot end on the back, just like on the Sprite drives and the other one. I've already started. You're going to remove the little baby screw, this little one here, from out of the back side, and your head should pop off. And then you just unclip your two wires, one for your heating element, one from your thermistor. I've kind of already started here, but yeah, here is your heating element. Here's your thermistor, and you're just going to remove those, and this should pop out. Let's do that. Boom, off comes the hot end. You'll know you have the right end on because all of your wires should match. You should have the same JST connectors on both sets that are going to go back in here. So now we're going to install the ceramic hot end into the hole after putting some boron nitrate on the end here. I prefer the Slice Engineering one. It's always worked great for me. You can pick this up from anywhere. Uh, Micro Center, Amazon, anywhere. They're pretty cheap. Don't go overboard. Just coat it and then stick it into the hole. Now we're going to go ahead and connect our wires. Obviously, they're two different sizes and they'll fit. That's your heating element. That's your thermistor. Let's connect them. Once you have those plugged in, you're just going to screw your little one tension. This little baby here. Don't lose it. It's going to go right back into the hole there, right there, to hold your uh, hot end in place. Make sure it's lined up straight, then screw that in. There it's nice and snug, and the nozzle doesn't move once you tighten that down on the throat, so it should be good to go. And now we're going to put things back together. Here you'll see the hole here. You're going to actually put that tube back into the extruder to uh, put your extruder motor back in place, and then screw it in place. Let's do it. As you see, it slid right in, holes line up. Now we're going to put the screws right in here. All the holes line up, so we're going to take the three screws and fasten it back together. Correction, fourth screw. My other one fell off the table. So yeah, four screws. Here's what everybody's worried about, the alignment on the CR Touch. Real simple fix. Take two M4 lug nuts and a M3 screw, an M3 12 screw. And you're gonna use both, all of these three on each side. One on this side, one on that side, and that will be the perfect distance from the nozzle and everything will line up correctly. This is how it should look once you've installed it with the nuts on the back side and the screw by itself on the other, screw head on the other side. And then you're gonna screw it into the gap there and the gap there on the other side. So let's finish this and I'll show you what it looks like. And there you go. Aligned up correctly, just above the nozzle, so that when the dauber drops, it's going to be in the right position as it should be. And that's it. That's how it should look on the side with the two nuts in there. Again, you can use a spacer if you want. It's just the size of two M4 nuts stacked on each other. That's your distance. That'll give you your space that you need. Keep in mind, you could have done this on the printer. I just find it easier to access everything taking it off. And that's the full install of the new hot end. Any questions? Leave them down in the comments below.